How do you see the situation at the front? Comment. The situation in the east of our state is difficult. I was there yesterday. I think that's where journalists need to come. That's where people need them to be. To show our guys and girls, our heroic people. We have a difficult situation in the east. The situation in Severodonetsk. You know, we hold it. We are holding the situation. There are more of them and they are more powerful. But, nevertheless, I think we have every chance to fight in this direction. As for Kharkiv, I think, you know, there are more positive things there. Step by step, our small villages and communities are being deoccupied. As for Zaporizhia, I think the situation is the most threatening. In the Zaporizhia region, due to the fact that some part of it is occupied, and the enemy, as we understand from both public and private interceptions, wants to occupy Zaporizhia. And surely, surely, in other directions, we see a better situation. Mr. President, I would like to ask you to comment on recent CNN information as if the United States, together with the European Union and the United Kingdom, are preparing a kind of peace plan that they intend to offer to Ukraine. Does the Ukrainian government actually know about such consultations, about this peace plan, and what do we think about it? And the question very related to what has just been said. In recent weeks, many different Western figures and respected media have been actively promoting the thesis that the war is dragging on, something needs to be done about it. Ukraine will not be able to defeat Russia, so let's look for some compromises. Like maybe territories, or maybe something else. Is this the evidence that fatigue concerning Ukraine and the Ukrainian war is growing? Is this the evidence of Russian propaganda, or is there some other explanation? Is there a risk that this will become a dominant thesis in the Western discourse till autumn? There's been enough fighting, now let's seek compromise? Thank you. It seems to me that you gave an answer to your own question. All these risks that you mentioned, I'm serious, that's what happened. With a joke, but I replied seriously now. I believe that all the risks you mentioned are there. Regarding the reaction of certain states, we must not allow this. We must work with all European countries, world countries. There is such a narrative. I heard about it just like you did. I do not know of any negotiations about the plans that were mentioned in the beginning of your question. None. Such negotiations are currently at zero. Of course, everyone really wants to push us a little bit to some result, to the result that is unwanted for us, because nobody asked us as of yet how we see it. This result, however, is desired by certain parties. They probably have their own interests, different, both financial and political. Fatigue is growing, people want to achieve some result. And you and I want to achieve the result that works for us. So I did not discuss with them the structures for resolving this war with a positive result for us. Mr. President, I just wanted to talk about the Azov people, what we said at the beginning about our information fight. And this is the topic that should be on the daily agenda. Therefore, we understand that this is what the Central Intelligence Agency is doing now. But we wanted to clarify. What is happening right now in the negotiations? Because that party, Russia, said that the trial will take place on June 29th. And let me refer to international politics. Boris Johnson. Italian newspapers write that he has been working for a month to create a new security format, which will include Britain and Ukraine, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia and Turkey. 
Did Ukraine receive this application? How do you see the alternatives to our attempts for the European Union? Or are we still waiting for the decision to be taken on June 23rd, when it will be? June 24th. First, there are no alternatives to our membership in the European Union, and there were even no proposals. We wouldn't consider it if there was even a proposal. But there was not even an offer of such alternative. The alternative was in regards to the security union. Regarding security, this is definitely not about the European Union. The alternative of the European Union has definitely nothing to do with Johnson. What I have seen and, according to the signals we constantly hear and know about, there are some European countries that do not want Ukraine's candidacy and Ukraine's forthcoming membership in the European Union. They promote the idea of some alternative. We have made our position clear, we do not need an alternative to the European Union. We do not need an alternative to candidacy for Union membership. And we do not understand the unwillingness of some states. Their unwillingness to offer us a candidacy for membership in the European Union. They find something, one reason or another. I think these are political excuses. Now as far as Johnson is concerned, with whom I never talk about the European Union, because he has nothing to do with it, we are talking about the security union but only concerning the framework of security guarantees for Ukraine. Concerning the circle of countries in the security union, yes, we talk about this, this is true. And structure-wise, structure-wise, we are currently working on the security union. Also in parallel with the sanctions platform, we have a security platform led by Rasmussen. Today they are talking. And Andri brought together certain specialists. They are now working on security guarantees for Ukraine. And this is not only for Ukraine. I think in principle it is needed for Europe. But this is not an alternative. This is what we need. We need to work out concrete things, and then specific countries that will be ready to sign this security agreement with us, will become our security guarantors. We are talking about this with Johnson, he really wants it, he wants to be one of the leaders, and he is one of the leaders of such an alliance. Please tell me, what is the stage of the negotiations about exporting Ukrainian grain from the ports? Who are you negotiating with? And today there was information from Russia and Turkey that on the 8th, Lavrov will be in Ankara and that they plan on signing something there. Please tell me, is Ukraine invited to this meeting or does anyone plan to be there? Thank you. I was not invited. The Minister of Foreign Affairs as of today has not been invited. There are talks that Turkey may be a mediator in this blockade of Ukrainian ports. I talked to President Erdogan and we talked about it among other topics. Because there were many topics we discussed with him and we talked about it. It is important for us that we are ready to ship grain. We are now breaking the information narrative of Russia that the shortage of food is caused by Ukraine that does not export. This is not true, you know this very well, but they are spreading this narrative precisely in those countries where there is a shortage, African countries, in Asia, even in Europe, everywhere. We need to have a safe corridor for ships so that the fleet of one state or another can ensure we export this grain. That's all. And we discussed this with Britain and Turkey. Turkey is now searching for a means to provide us with guarantees. This is true. I think that's why they are meeting with the Russians. So Russia gave them guarantees that nothing will happen to their ships.
I think so. Nevertheless, I am not aware of the details of their meeting. In the meantime, the United Nations are the United Nations are those with whom we are negotiating the export of grain. There are several options to export our grain. We are discussing it with close countries and the Baltic countries and with Poland how to export a small amount by Ukrainian railways and by rail further. But it does not work for us, for us and for these countries. And there are risks of shortages associated with the long, long time of export. Therefore, this is one of the directions. The other direction is ports, and this is most important, this is the priority. We will be able to export very quickly. If I'm not mistaken, we will be able to export 10 million tons a month. This is serious. You know, if now we have 22 to 25 million tons blocked, then in fall we may already have 75. What are we going to do? Therefore, we won't manage without ports. Yes. There are rumors that one of the conditions concerns demining the ports on the Odessa coast. Which guarantees does Ukraine need to go for it? That is, who should be the guarantor for us to agree to this? I think the strongest guarantee is that our appropriate weapons are deployed in the region of the corridors to port for the export of grain. We are working on it. With specific states, with specific systems, with specific anti-ship systems. I will put it this way. We are working, and little by little, we are already getting it, I can say that. I believe that these are better guarantees, because things may turn different as far as the fleet of the Russian Federation is concerned. We are not threatening with these systems. We just say we are ready to respond very quickly. As for other guarantees, these are countries we can trust, which will have agreements with the Russian side. These countries should really be our partners, who are ready to take risks. Really take a risk. And more guarantees, apart from the countries and the United Nations, and the concentration of our weapons near these corridors. I do not see any other guarantees. I don't see them, I don't believe in them, honestly. And to be even more honest, I strongly believe that, as soon as we install these systems, we will install them. Very soon, I believe that will be the strongest guarantee. You have already mentioned the list of individual sanctions by the Ermac McFall group. If I am not mistaken, what are the prospects for their implementation? What effect can it give? There are no complex issues about oil, gas. They might be, to an innocent mind, quicker to implement. And, if I may, with regard to grain export, Putin, with his accomplice Lukashenko, offers the Belarusian alternative. Is it not considered at all or does it appear under some consideration? Individual sanctions are just as complex as any others, as embargoes, too. There was a certain church figure of the Russian Federation, and it turned out to be more difficult even than the oil embargo. That's why I wouldn't say so. I think it's difficult, but these are important steps. These are the evidence of blocking, that we are not standing still, blocking of assets goes on, etc., many things. Assets are blocked, you can't just do it. There is a complex legislative process, different in each state. When talking about blocking, it's not just that we, good guys, started blocking some real estate property or some accounts. That's not enough. We don't really want to block something and then see someone using it. Because we are blocking not just for no reason, because we are, as they say, very harmful. No, we are not just very. We are very very harmful. So we are blocking because they took a lot of this from us, took a lot of money. People, homes, businesses, big money, these need to be returned. Yes, Europe and the world will help us finance wise after the war, but that is not enough. 
We need compensation. Nobody will give us anything for free. These are just empty talks about quick reparations, etc. I do not believe in it, about quick steps. And there, I understand the funds are in a particular state, there are specific accounts. There are specific figures. Not all states disclose these figures. We don't even know yet. No, I will say so, they do not disclose, but we already know the money amounts there, but they will not talk about them publicly. We all need to fight for this to return all this money to Ukraine. Therefore, it is not enough to just block them. We need legislative changes or decisions, lawyers, companies, lobbyists, a lot of things to work on abroad. They should work for us. I repeat, no one but us is interested in this. There are several countries, really European, that support us and say, we will do everything, we will give you this money. That is why the list of these people is important. The list of these oligarchs is important. The list of these business owners is important. The list of all politicians, their children and wives is important. They are transferring assets from one businessman, from the oligarch. Now they have a scheme. They are transferring assets to the businessmen of the second tier, so to say. It should be all uncovered. They're searching for this second tier of business. When we find them, we add them to the list of those people who should be sanctioned. Then they also try to evade account blocking. Someone succeeds and transfers again. And this is a tedious constant struggle. Circle, you know, the circle. And so you need to lock everything and return the money to the maximum. And this takes not a day or a month, probably years, but we must fight. Regarding Belarusians, this information is available. We were offered to go through Belarus by rail. Yes, we understand even the volume. But we also understand why they offer this to us. We are not ready to follow this format yet. And help our friendly neighbors.